All right, so I have a couple different options in this game. So this game is called Arcade Spirits. Let me move over to this really quick. <clears throat> Okay, so this is Arcane Spirits. Arcade Spirits was described to me as it's a post 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 apocalyptic world where I guess the post apocalypticness started in the eighties and so everything eighties, which is now retro, was like still very active and cool. Um, and I went to a voiceover panel on Sunday night, which was essentially what I do on stream. It was a bunch of voice actors that got together and they played the intros or certain episodes of indie games that either didn't already have voice acting, or in this case, this one does have voice acting, but they did all of the parts um, themselves. So in the preferences, I'm not quite sure whether this is... So if I turn dialogue off, I think she said that I will then be able to do the dialogue and that they won't have their own dialogue. But let me go ahead and start. And if I need to back out and change the preferences, I will. The following is a work of fiction. All references are trademarked classic arcade game title. Okay. <laughs> Did not do that fast enough. Winners don't use drugs. All right. Iris online. Voice volume off. Maybe that will be what we want. <clears throat> Alright. Hello, my name is Iris and I'm your personal digital assistant. I'll be getting you ready to experience one day in the life of the exciting world of arcade management. I, I promise it'll be exciting. Really, trust me. 99.97 exciting. Percent, sorry, percent exciting, minimum. But before we begin, can you please tell me a bit about yourself? Your name, what you look like, that sort of thing. Oh goodness, all right. We gotta get the red hair color here. Ooh, what is my name? My name, my name is always Rishi. All right, we got pronouns, we got hairstyle. Excellent. I am a pasty white person. That's what, see, I'm wearing a purple shirt right now. Yeah, how about that? And blue, blue, there we go. Is that me? Does it look like me? Yes, basically. <laughs> Name, Rishi Moon, pronoun, she. Is this correct? Yes. Okay, for purposes of this demo, we'll jump you right into the middle of your first day on the job. What? You wanted training? No time. It's sink or swim. Here we go. It is the distant future, year 20XX, and yesterday, I was unemployed. Today, I'm technically back in the working class. I can't believe I let that weird girl app who lives in my phone talk to me into this. I mean, I needed a job, but working in an arcade? Seriously? Here in 20XX, video arcades are pretty mainstream, like going out to the movies or grabbing pizza or something. Although back in 1980X, we very narrowly avoided a video game crash which might have destroyed the whole industry dodged a bullet there. I wonder if there's some dystopian version of 20XX where that happened. Truly the darkest timeline. I love this is all 20XX based since uh, the next game I'm going to play is literally called 20XX. But anyway, it's all connected. But actually working in an arcade is risky. Like working in a landmine factory. Particularly a little mom and pop place like this one that could go bankrupt any day now. 
everyone has a dream they're chasing, dearie. No doubt you'll find yours as well. Is what she told me when I joined on with Francine's arcade funplex. I don't know if working here is my dream exactly. Truthfully, I haven't even been to an arcade in, uh, well, let's see. 15 years. But, well, how best can I put this? Ooh, okay, so we get to choose responses based on personalities. I'm getting a phone call, sorry. All right, what we got here? This is every kid's dream come true. Okay, I can be either quirky, steady, kindly, gutsy, or basically. Is that calling me basic? Um, okay. I'm gonna go with quirky. This is every kid's dream come true. Oh, I was gonna mention why I found out about this game. So I went to this panel on Sunday night, which was this giant read, this is basically my stream, et cetera. I already mentioned that part. Um, and they played a series of, of games and this was one of them. And it was, I think, Jake Green and Sarah. I might have to remember Sarah's last name. Um, sorry, the pamphlet I left downstairs, but they, uh, they had these little pamphlets which were um, you know, about the games that we were playing and about the voice actors that we were going to be listening to. And every time there was a choice in a game like this one, um, they would read all the different uh, options and we would like put up our little bill like it was an auction for which one we wanted to, to go for. So it was like a choose your own adventure with the entire crowd, which was really fun. It worked out really well. All right. So we got, this is every kid's dream come true. I'm willing to take this seriously. I'm looking for hope after so long. Eh, why not? Let's do this. Or I can go with the flow. And I think this is every kid's dream come true, because at least that was my dream as a kid. If I could, like, work and make a living working in an arcade, I think that'd be great. Or, like, Mox. I would love to work at Mox. I'm working in an arcade. I'm surrounded by games. Some seriously fun games. This is what every kid dreams about doing when they grow up. At least my first day has been pretty quiet. No customer service crisis for me to deal with. Just a bunch of regulars playing their usual games. And of course, my coworkers. May as well wander the floor a bit, see if anybody needs help. That's Naomi Fairchild, our techie. She fixes up these old 1980X games, which are constantly breaking down. Hey, Naomi. Problems? Did you have lunch yet? Can you pass me that multimeter before the power supply on this game melts down? Uh, sure. Here you go. Thanks. Figured since it's quiet in here today, I'd do some work on the floor. Um, although I should probably go grab some replacement parts. Excuse me. Next up is Percy Sinclair, our world record high score chaser on Mr. Moopy's Magic Maze, the hottest arcade title of 1980X. He's been working on hitting that goal ever since coming over here from England, as far as I know. Probably without food or sleep. Hey, Percy. Okay, oh god, all right. Why is a British accent being so elusive to me right now? Hello, hello, Reesey. Hey, Percy. Need anything? A snack? Some water? I'm making rounds. Hmm, oh, no, no, I'm, I'm quite well, thank you. I'm just not gonna do a British accent. Uh, how long have you been standing there? Don't you need to go to the bathroom eventually? That's what extra lives are for. I appreciate the concern, love, but I'll be just fine. Thanks for the inquiry, mind you. Next, I swing by our fist of discomfort machine which always has some fierce competition going down between eSports pros and wannabes. In case it wasn't clear, the one on the left is the pro, Queen B, representing L7 Gaming, a prestigious FOD team. She even uses a portable rig of webcams and lights to stream her matches over the internet. The Funplex is basically her personal broadcast studio. Do you need anything, Queen B? Doing rounds. No, I'm- Oh, come fuck on! 
There's no fucking way that's even plausible. Those hitboxes don't even fucking connect. Who cares? This isn't a tournament. I'm taking the win. Yeah, sorry, not happening. Did I mention I happened to buy an, ex an extra ultimate technique scroll from the item store? Take this. What? How did you defeat me? Oh no! I love that he's rando Calrissian. That's adorable. Oh, 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 GG. Oh, wow. Queen Bee is really going at him today. That's Ashley. She works the floor alongside me, solving any arcade type problems we find out there. Hmm, I wonder if her annihilating every single person who walks up to the game is really helping the arcade in the long run? You tell me. I'm new here. I don't know anything about, like, anything. At the very least, it's entertaining to watch. Hey, thanks for covering the f Hey, thanks for covering the floor. I need to head back and work on my pinky costume. The head keeps falling off. The cosplayer's work is never finished. <laughs> Ashley Wolf, away! And lastly, we have... Oh my god. Oh my god. Our Showtime stage dance team leader, Tio. Hello, hello! Having a lovely day? Not half as lovely as you, I should add. Who is a big ol' flirt. Just the rounds, like Gavin told me to do. Nothing special going on. Well, if you ever want to show me your moves, you know where to find me. Oh, right. How could I forget about Gavin? He is the business manager. Well, he doesn't own the place, but close enough. Miss Moon. Um, Mr. Cooper. I trust your first day is going well. No issues. All's quiet on the Western Front. Good, good. Only a few more hours till closing. With any luck, we can escape today in a reasonably profitable state and live to see another day. I got the head fix! Look, look! <laughs> ah, yes. That's the semi-terrifying mascot of the Funplex. Pinky the Funplex Flamingo. I nearly went into cardiac arrest the first time I saw that. Next time we've got a bunch of kids here, I'll be ready. And I'm happy to announce our Joust TM is fixed at last. Um, I did have to order a few more replacement parts for Gauntlet, though. It went down moments later. Typical. Well, all in all, still not a bad day. And not a bad first day for you either, Rishi. And that was my first day at Francine's Arcade Funplex. Hope you had fun. Game over. Thanks for playing. And... By the way, I've booked a birthday party, a birthday party for this afternoon. Ugh. Oh. Uh, what? The looks of confusion and outright terror on their faces, all after dying off immediately, are vaguely concerning to me. Sorry, sorry. I meant to tell you, dears, but I plumb forgot. Uh, birthday party? How old are the kids, may I ask? It's her fifth birthday. Oh, to be young again. Uh, Five-year-olds! Naomi starts pulling at her hair, eyes wide and trembling. Throwing skee-balls overhand into the glass, jumping up and down on the pinball machines, putting chewy gum into coin slots. Pulling at my costume? Tearing off pieces of it? Naomi, Ashley, keep it together. We've survived kids' birthday parties before. Doom! Doom, the end is nigh! Well... I'd hate to get in the way of all the fun. Time for my afternoon nap, anyway. Have fun, dears. Right. Battle stations, everyone. I'll take the ticket desk so I can oversee operations. Ashley, greet the kids. Naomi, watch for hardware damage. 
Rishi, roaming duty. Look for trouble, do what you can. Prepare yourselves. They are coming. Like an oncoming tidal wave, the rumble is felt before it's seen. Parents pulling into the parking lot, minivans disgorging kindergartners, and suddenly... I love the art in this game, too. An explosion of small humans rushes the doors, bursting into the arcade before scattering every which way. Even before any of them can get tokens, they're grabbing at joysticks, mashing buttons, eager to get their game on, or even just pretend to be playing. The crew assumes battle stations, Naomi by the fragile pinball machines, Ashley near the door, trying to distract the incoming kids to greet them. Gavin, armed with pre-stacked $10 rolls of tokens, quickly exchanges them with the adults. Beats waiting in line at the change machines. As for the pro gamers, well, Queen Bee and Tia's friends bolt for the exit, abandoning them. Keen on getting out ahead of the surge of kitties, I guess. And that's all very well and good, but I've got no idea where I'm supposed to be. Roaming duty, Gavin said. Look for trouble, Gavin said. I mean, I was doing that before, but now... Now the chaos is multiplied. For a few minutes I'm like a pinball, being bounced around, or like that frog trying to cross a highway of traffic. Eventually, I spot three possible problems on the rise, and Rishi, professional floor attendant, is ready to attend them. Which one of these do I want to tackle first, though? Alright, we've got two kids fighting over a box of cupcakes near Naomi and Ashley. An angry adult shouting at a kid near Tio and Queen Bee, or a little girl crying about stolen tickets near Percy and Gavin. Alright. What do we got here? Alright, let's do cupcakes. I can smell disaster on the wind, and it smells sweet. As in, I can smell that box of birthday cupcakes one of the parents left near the ticket desk, with kids swarming around it, scavenging for their favorite icing colors. At first, my inner child is merely offended that someone thought of, thought one of those icing bobbed cupcake cakes was superior to actual birthday cake. But there are clearly larger issues at stake than that. I want chocolate! I don't, don't take all the chocolate! I want two cupcakes! Give me two cupcakes! No fair! Everybody gets one and mine's gotta be chocolate! Of course, the kid at the front grabs the last one. Finders keepers, losers weepers! The parents aren't paying attention. They're too busy complaining about their jobs and the weather and the PTA and stuff. Meaning, when the first cupcake is thrown, nobody is there to stop it. Ah, oh, stop it! Stop it! I want chocolate! As blobby wads of icing and sponge cake go flying, I glance over to the coin-op games, which are about to get caught in the crossfire. <laughs> Naomi, who's busy trying to unjam a joystick one of the kids waggled too hard, looks up to see the cupcake onslaught coming her way. <laughs> As does Ashley, whose fuzzy costume is a nice and inviting target for flying confectionery. Act fast, Reese. Alright, so we have to save Naomi's game, save Ashley's costume, or try and save them both. Oh no. What do you think we should do? I don't think it's gonna work, but I'm gonna try and save them both. Quickly, I hurl myself into action. Get down! Numbness sets in as multitude rounds of frosting-coated mortar fire impact against my body. When I finally hit the ground, my clothes are totally ruined. But alas, my noble self-sacrifice could not completely protect them. Naomi seems to get the idea and shields the game with her body. A few stray cupcakes that missed me hit her, but otherwise, no damage done. Ashley takes a few shots, unfortunately, but it could have been worse. As parents swarm to round up their cupcake war instigators, 
Naomi and Ashley kneel down to check on my fallen form. Rishi, are you okay? Could be paralyzed from the neck down. Rishi, blink once if you're paralyzed. Think twice if not. Uh, I'm not uh, paralyzed. Oh, hey, oh, you could talk. That works too. Naomi helps me to my feet, although I have to be careful not to mingle my icing with her icing in the process. Days like these, I'm glad I wear an apron. Ew, cupcakes are food, not fashion. Colored icing is just the worst. I think I could get these two out with some club soda, fortunately. Guess they got all of us, huh? But Rishi, worst of all. You know, that was super selfless of you, trying to save us from the splatter. Speaking as a floor attendant, you score a silver medal. Despite all of us ending up splattered a little, they seem in good spirits. I should try to keep that rolling. All right, we can do, my cupcake food was not strong enough. I must now go meditate under a waterfall and train for 10 years, which personally seems a little extreme. Uh, no mere cupcake can stop me. I am a hardened and stalwart defender of this arcade. Uh, or never mind me, how are you two? Anything I can do to help? I think I'm gonna go bold. No mere cupcake can stop me. I am a hardened and stalwart defender of this arcade. I fear no confectionery. Bring it on, break your desserts upon my body, and I shall stand guard forevermore. Hey, that could be a good team building exercise for the staff. Ugh, please no, I hate gross stuff. It's just cupcakes, cupcakes are great. To eat, yes. Not to play an oversized game of paintball with. Anyway, thanks Rishi. That was a complete mess, but I guess I could have been more of a complete mess if you hadn't done that. I'd better get back to fixing this joystick. You should clean up and get back to it also. The party's still going. Good luck. Yeah, good luck and hey, good work. If you'll excuse me, I need to go clean up poor Pinky a bit. That could have gone better, but it also could have gone much, much worse. More importantly, I kept their spirits up. Even Ashley, who, was a clean, who has to clean icing out of her fuzzy felt, came out of it cheerful. With a brief nod from Gavin, I snatched one of the official Funplex t-shirts to replace my cupcake top. After a few minutes in the bathroom to change and wipe icing off my pants, I'm ready to go again. Right, that's sorted out. I've only got time to deal with one more problem, though. Which one? All right, we can do an angry adult shouting at a kid near Tio and Queen Bee, or a little girl crying about stolen tickets near Percy and Gavin. Let's see. I'm gonna go with a little girl crying. I weave my way through waves of children towards the skee ball machines. One little girl sitting at the end of a skee ball ramp crying. No parent in sight to settle her, so the task falls to me. I'm guessing I should be more cautious about this sort of thing, with what lawsuit happy parents lurking over by the vending machines ignoring their kids, but. Floor attendant Rishi decided to take the case all the same. Hey, hey, my name's Rishi, and I work here at the arcade. What's wrong? Can, can I help? Her sobbing pauses as she looks up at me. I lost my tickets. Someone stole them from me. I played and played and watched a bunch of them, but then I put them down and I was talking to a friend and now they're gone. I glance around, but in a sea of kids, it's impossible to tell who the thief could be. I don't even have any more tokens to play with. I spent them all on ski ball. And my tickets are all gone now. <laughs> easy, easy. We'll figure this out somehow. Although I've got no clue to even start, to be honest. Maybe there was a witness to the crime? Percy would have had a good view of, of the Redemption game area based on where Loopy's positioned. Gavin has the ticket desk, a veritable crow's nest for the whole arcade. He could have spotted something. 
Or I could just bend the rules and solve this directly. All right, so we got a choice. Maybe Percy saw something. I could deal with this quietly if he can identify the culprit. Gavin had to see where the tickets went or he'd know what to do at least. The arcade policy. Uh, just give the kids some replacement tokens for my own stash. I'll take the heat, no problem. I'm kind of thinking that even if I figure out who stole them, it's just going to make a different kid cry, and I'm not sure I really want that, so I'm just going to give the kids some replacement tokens for my own stash. I can do this on my own. I'm the floor attendant, aren't I? And I say the fastest solution is just a copper some tokens. I don't like letting the ticket thief walk, but this will stop her crying and won't really cost us much in the end. Customer happiness is more important than three bucks. And if Gavin doesn't like it, too bad. This is my decision. In fact, I'll tell you what, kiddo. I'll replace your missing tokens so you win the tickets back, and I'll show you Rishi's secret ski ball techniques. Really? Really. Yay! I can get it in the hundred. I keep missing and it ends up in the tenny. Memories of past arcade visits come flooding back, because I was in that same situation once. I remember going to arcades with my family, before things started going wrong. I remember... Ooh, the flashback. <laughs> okay, here's the trick. It's my super secret technique, so don't tell anyone, okay? Okay! Let's see. Okay, so we got... If you ever miss, just say, I meant to do that. Just gotta give your all, swing for the fences. Aim for 30 every time, right down the center. Celebrate your victories, accept the misses, or become one with the ball. Let's see here. Hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna go with become one with the ball. It's about being relaxed, being calm. If you go with the flow and don't let anything get you down, you'll find you have better control. Your score will go up. So, just relax? Just relax. Stop, close your eyes, take a deep breath, and play. She seems a bit unsure, but drops in a coin anyway to try it out. She pauses, closing her eyes and breathing deeply. Then, she winds up a throw, aims it carefully down the middle, and lands squarely in the 40-point hole, with a little jingle of delight from the machine. I did it! I wasn't worried or anything. <laughs> that you did. I think you've got it. Keep playing like that, and you'll be just fine. <laughs> okay. Thanks, lots and lots. The girl actually hugs me. Well... Hugs my legs, anyway. I'd best leave her to her game. My work here is done. Rishi away. Two problems in the can. Okay. Cupcakes and tickets sorted out. As for that angry, shouting parent by the driving games, I, uh, oh. Uh-oh. Looks like they went home. Problem solved? But the boy she was shouting at is gone, too. Hey, Rishi, he missed the fireworks, and I don't mean my dancing. What, what happened? Queen Bee glances back briefly, in the middle of playing some samurai-based fighting game. Oh, some fucker was screaming at this kid for no good reason. Eventually, the parents got into a shouting match. Tio talked them both down, but they all decided to bail on the party. <laughs> all I did was point out that we were right next to a donut shop frequented by some friendly cops. Ah, drat. I was hoping to cool things off so they could keep enjoying the party. So they could keep enjoying the party? Don't sweat it, gal. You did good work out there. Yeah, I saw that impromptu cupcake shooting gallery. What a mess. And those stolen tickets? Man, kids can be jerks. But you gave it your best. You're looking pretty run down, though. Why not take a break? <sighs> I have a solemn and sworn duty to bring peace to my arcade. Eh, fuck that. G gotta take five. Well, truthfully, 
I am pretty worn the heck out after all that. Tino's right. I need to step away from this craziness, if only for a few minutes. After a silent nod from Gavin to, com to confirm it's cool with him, I slip away, headed for the employee lounge. Some hours later, from the cars pulling up in the parking lot, looks like the party's over. It's just about closing time for the arcade anyway. Most of the gamers have filled out by now. Have filled out by now. Filed out by now, sorry. If they hadn't already fled the tidal wave of kitties. My first impulse is to just go bug Gavin to finish up my employment paperwork, but eh, that can wait. Alright, so we got Gavin's tapping at his tablet and frowning. Let's find out why. Ashley's quietly repairing her costume. Maybe she should use company. She could use company. Naomi's prying gum out of a coin slot and looks ready to cry. Queen Bee is packing up her gear, ready to go home. T is cooling down with some fast cars five before the day is through. Or Percy's finally finished his movie game and is ready to leave. Um, let's see here. I'm kind of thinking... Let's help the person that's about to cry. Naomi definitely looks like she could use a hand. Someone's jammed bright pink bubblegum into a coin slot, and she's trying to clear the sticky mess out. Ugh, how could they? How could they do this to a poor innocent Qbert? Little Qbert. Hey, need a hand? Oh, thank goodness. Yeah, work on the second player slot for me. I've got swabs and stuff in my kit there. Grab what you need. Honestly, the nerve of those kids. No respect at all for these games. Games aren't shoe-proof, machine-washable baby toys. They're delicate and deserve love and care. But they are toys, right? Well, yeah, I mean, of course. Just, you know, they're also works of art. I know not everybody sees it that way. Back in the 80s, operators would just, just throw away games that didn't perform well anymore. In the end, an arcade has to make money. That means using and abusing a game until it's time to put it out to pasture. But I don't have to like it, right? Definitely not stand up for game rights. The kids had a lot of fun, they're not all mean, or how long does a game last realistically? I'm gonna go with definitely not. Of course not. You love these games. You shouldn't just let them be abused, even if they do have to make money. Next time you see some kid smacking a game around, stuffing gum into the slot or whatever, you let me know. I'll deal with them. Thanks, Rishi. It's good to know someone's got my back. Still, I need to be realistic, right? I know this isn't a museum. We aren't preserving priceless treasures for generations to come. Sometimes I treat it like my little private collection, but really, I do want people to play and enjoy these games. And that does wear them down in time. As long as I'm here, I'll pick up a game when it wobbles on its feet, dust it off, straighten it up, and send it out to there to be played with all over again. With the last of the gum pulled out of the slot, Naomi closes up her toolbox. I should probably pull the coin mix. I should probably pull the coin mix entirely and give them a good cleaning tomorrow. But I didn't want to let the gum sit overnight. And Rishi. It means a lot to me that you're working here now. I, uh, I'm looking forward to working with you, you know? Um, on work. Working things. Huh. She suddenly got all blushy and fidgety. Uh, I mean, you love these games like I do, and you really helped me out today. And, uh, we work well together, right? Yeah. And, and that's good, right? And, and totally normal. Um, it's good for coworkers to feel super comfortable around each other. Uh, yeah? Okay, well then, I'm headed home soon. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye! And she strolls out with a little spring in her step, humming the coin knob jingle from one of her favorite games as she goes. And that was just my first day. Little did I know what would come after that. Haunted arcades, crowded game conventions, cosplay craziness, and cutthroat tournament competition. Not to mention the one rival who was waiting in the wings, 
to swoop in and destroy the Funplex once and for all. So, is this arcade seriously my dream job? Maybe. I knew working in an arcade would be fun. You play games for a living. Well, you deal with people who are playing games for a living, at least. Will the fun last? I don't know. But I'm willing to find out. Wouldn't you? And that's the demo of Arcade Spirits. A winner is you. Now, let's see your scores. Looks like you're really hitting it off with Naomi. Also, it looks like your personality is full of guts. Strong guts. Finally, you've scored 1,400 points. Nice work. Hope you had fun. Oh, and if you'd let's play this game, let us know. We'd love to watch your video, which I will be doing. Thanks for playing Arcade Spirits, and I hope to see you again in the full game. All right, that was Arcade Spirits, a romantic comedy narrative adventure in the arcade year 28XX. Um, so these are some of the other things that you can do in the game. I will definitely be buying this game and streaming it because it is perfect for my stream to do all the voices. I apologize, I was not quite up to snap with my voice being this rough right now, but uh, when I buy the full game, it'll probably be in uh, September, October when I get back from vacation. I guess it is September. Oh my goodness, it's already September. Um, but I will be playing through the whole game. I think it'll be great to have people come and watch um, while I practice some improv uh, new voices. So it's always kind of nice to do both the female and the male side and see, uh, trying to just stretch myself and see how well I can do with the differentiation. So thank you so much for watching that one. So let